Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about the Doppler effect, and specifically we're actually going to try to visualize the visual Doppler effect as opposed to the auditory Doppler effect that's actually quite widespread on our planet Earth. Anyway, welcome to What The Math, and enjoy the video. <laughs> So we're going to start by basically seeing uh, what kind of an effect we can see if we actually approach the event horizon of a supermassive black hole. Now, the difficult thing about Doppler effect is that it's actually very, very challenging to simulate. And specifically, there's actually very, very few good simulations out there that show you how the effect works. And so right now, you can kind of see that things have actually turned more blue than they should be. In Space Engine, this is pretty much as far as you go with simulating the Doppler effect. Now, if I stay um, if I stay outside of the event horizon, the stars look normal. There's really nothing uh, added to their color. But as I get closer and closer and closer to the event horizon, things get a little bit more blue. And this is what we refer to as the blue shift. Now, Doppler effect is actually very, very important in astronomy, and it's also important in other fields as well. Uh, and it was originally discovered by an Austrian physicist, Christian Doppler, back in 1842. And today, what I wanted to do is I wanted to, to show you um, a very interesting simulation by the MIT University, available for free in the link in the description below. And I've briefly actually reviewed that simulation maybe sometime last year. But um, this simulation will actually help you visualize Doppler effect the best possible way by using a very simple game. Now, before we do this, let's actually very briefly mention the Doppler effect that we actually do here on Earth. We don't see it, we hear it because we can only uh, detect the auditory Doppler effect. So for example, if there is a speeding uh, fire truck coming toward you, you usually hear the siren uh, slightly differently from what you would hear if the speeding truck was moving away from you. The frequency here is higher than the frequency of waves here, obviously because of the motion of the truck. This is essentially the Doppler effect in a nutshell, but since uh, light speed is much higher than this, uh, nothing on Earth really produces Doppler effect. So we will have to actually rely on the simulations. And unfortunately, except for a space engine, I don't really think I know of any simulation that provides you with any kind of uh, visual representation of the uh, of the Doppler effect. And so here, let's just take a look at the last black hole here that will give us just a bit of an idea of what blue shift would be like. And this is, in, um, if you, in case you haven't figured this out, this is when the uh, visual waves start approaching a lot faster than they should and they basically create, uh, or they basically change the entire sky into slightly bluish color. And, and so this is just one of the things that happen when you approach uh, a black hole, any black hole really. And also a lot of other dense bodies, like for example, a neutron star would also produce a very, very similar effect. So here we go. You can see it turns a little bit more blue. Now that's, that's kind of not enough for me. So I decided to show you uh, the simulation known as a slower speed of light. This is actually more of a, a game, a very simple game, but the idea here is to teach you about both the redshift and the blue shift, while at the same time even teaching you about things like uh, dilation. And specifically here we're talking about um, length dilation. So right now I'm moving at a regular speed, or I guess, you know, speed that's uh, under the speed of light, and everything to me looks kind of normal. This is what you would see normally. And as soon as you start absorbing these little balls, it starts giving you the percentage of the speed of light. So I'm going to actually do this really slowly because this game is a little bit tricky to control because it is a game after all. And you'll notice that the more balls I, I consume, the more world around me starts to change as I move toward objects. So for example, right now we're going to have 10% of the speed of light. And at this speed, if I move towards something, it looks a little bit more bluish. If I move away from something, it looks a little bit more brownish and reddish. And this is red shift and blue shift um, effects, basically in action. So this is what they would uh, create if you were to move in a spacecraft at 
uh, well, right now it's actually 13% of the speed of light. So we're going to keep going, and you'll notice that at some point, uh, the visual effects here will become quite dramatic. As a matter of fact, not only will you start seeing blue and red shifts, but you also start detecting things getting stretched a little bit. And this is the so-called uh, length dilation, or dilation in general, that actually starts happening as you move closer and closer to the speed of light. So right now we're at 30% of the speed of light. And if I move toward an object, you'll see how a lot more bluish things become. And on the bottom there, you can actually see that uh, things even go into the ultraviolet to uh, infrared even. And so if something was invisible light, it might become ultraviolet and it actually become invisible, specifically something that's blue color. So there's a blue mushroom right there. If you start moving toward it, it might actually have no color whatsoever because we, we're not able to see ultraviolet. If I move away from it, the opposite happens. Things become infrared and the blue mushroom actually becomes green because it moves toward the green light. So that's that's a red shift in, in action. So we're going to collect more of these balls and we're actually going to get to half of the speed of light and see what things start looking like as you get closer and closer to that magical number. 299,000 kilometers per second. So right now we're going to be just over if I collect all of the balls, we're going to be just over half of the speed of light. And at that speed, you'll notice that things really start changing dramatically. So if you're moving at that speed, this is what the front of the spaceship would look like. If you were uh, to look out of the back window, this is what you would see. And if you were to basically kind of look into the side window, let's try to simulate this. If you were to look into the side window, you would see this, which is pretty cool. It's a, almost like a rainbow of things. Okay, so now we're going to get closer and closer to the speed of light. And you'll notice that as I'm moving toward those objects, a lot of things will actually start disappearing from you completely. They'll actually become ultraviolet. And if you're flying in a spaceship at a very, very, very high speed, things will basically start disappearing pretty quickly in front of you. So you'll have to use uh, various types of detectors to try to see things. And you can see that even the ground starts looking differently because we now see things we didn't see before. And so essentially this is what it starts looking like. And if I move away, it, the back of the ship will look almost entirely red. Now notice how if I move away, things seem to actually zoom in a little bit. And if I move toward them, they seem to be, to be zooming out. This zooming in and zooming out effect, this is the dilation effect, uh, specifically the, uh, the uh, length dilation in action. And so right now, as I'm getting closer to 80% of the speed of light, the dilation becomes a lot more apparent. As a matter of fact, things will start stretching more and more as I move toward them, and things will start shrinking as I move away from them. And right now, it's almost impossible to see what's behind this, because all of the colors are kind of gone. And so here is that 80th bowl. 80% of the speed of light. This is the front of the ship. Looks absolutely uh, mesmerizing and kind of psychedelic in a sense. And then the back of the ship looks basically black with these really interesting mushrooms that are in infrared color. And once again, from the side, you would see this very unusual effect. It'll probably give you a lot of headaches if you're flying in this particular spaceship. All right, let's get closer and closer to the speed of light. We're going to get to 99 balls, 99% of the speed of light, and see what things start looking like. Now, as you can imagine, in front we'll probably see nothing. There'll be just ultraviolet, and as a matter of fact, if you were to look out of the spaceship uh, front window, or I guess you would call it windshield, would you call it a windshield? There's no wind in space. Front shield of a spacecraft uh, flying at a very, very high velocity, you would very likely be bombarded with so much, uh, with such a high amount of very high frequency radiation that not only would you go blind, but you'd probably possibly even get a serious, serious sunburn, even after a few minutes of looking into the window, because you're basically being bombarded with high ultraviolet radiation. And uh, that's essentially like looking on, into the sun on a very hot day and not wearing any sunscreen. 
However, if you were to look at the back of the ship, basically look to the back window, in this case, even the most dangerous radiation, such as X-ray radiation, would actually probably appear in visual light to you and be completely harmless. So even if you witness like a supernova going off behind you as you're moving away from the supernova, it would be absolutely harmless by the time it gets to you. And so here are these four last balls uh, in front of us. We're now going to be moving practically almost to the speed of light. And this is 99% of the speed of light. This is the dilation in front of us, the dilation behind us. Everything is completely black. You can't really see anything. Although the mushroom hats are still kind of apparent. And then to the side, you see this side window. Let's get that last ball and we'll be basically moving at 100% speed of light, which is actually uh, not theoretically possible unless you are speed of unless you are light, unless you are a photon. But uh, this will actually show us the ultimate dilation. So if you were to move away from something as a photon, you would basically see everything kind of zooming in um, toward you. And if you were to move toward something, everything would be kind of moving away from you. And it's actually very difficult for me to try to navigate because I have to reach that gate right there. So there is that ultimate dilation at the speed of light. And here we go. Maybe I'll get it. Oh, so close. Yes, we did it. 833. That's not my best record, but that's not the most important thing right now. So anyway, so that's essentially the uh, Doppler effect and dilation and redshift and blue shift in, in a nutshell. And it's super, super important in astronomy and very, very important in other fields, like I mentioned before. And specifically because today we use the Doppler effects um, for finding various exoplanets. So one of the most common ways to find an exoplanet nowadays is to actually watch it orbit around a star or not watch it orbit, but basically look at the star for a very long time. And if we actually start detecting um, shifts in the light of that star, so basically, if we start detecting Doppler shifts, we know that something is causing uh, that star to move a little bit faster and a little bit slower, and that something is usually an exoplanet. So today, Doppler effect is one of the prime ways of finding stars in, not stars, but exoplanets around stars in our galaxy. And uh, it will probably be used for many other different reasons as well, as we learn more and more about our own galaxy. But for now, that's essentially all I wanted to talk about in this video. And hopefully you learned a little bit about Doppler effect and a Doppler shift. And now know a little bit more about astronomy as well. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. Share this video with someone who wants to learn through video games and who likes space sciences. And come back here tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.